So yeah, uh, good afternoon everybody and welcome to this talk. Uh, I am Paolo Angelelli from the Qt company in Oslo. And uh, I'm the one that uh, has done uh, most of the work on the Qt location module like in the last year, about so. And what I want to present to you today is uh, basically all the new features that we have uh, introduced uh, uh, in Qt location with Qt 5.9. So uh, I made, uh, I, to give you a preview of this, I made this a small map here that uh, shows uh, a, a map rendered with uh, the new Mapbox GL plugin that is backed by a third party mapping engine that is the Mapbox GL native. And it has been tilted like to give uh, a kind of bird eye view like what is usually found in navigators. This, by the way, was not possible before. So, uh, I want to say that uh, this has also been possible thanks uh, to Mapbox. So, I mean, without their help, this plugin couldn't, couldn't, couldn't be there today. And here there is Bruno from Mapbox. Um, he has a talk in about 25 minutes. And I assume that some of you might want to attend this talk. So, um, what uh, you could do, if you want, is to keep an eye on the clock on the top right and uh, just uh, leave when uh, when you have to 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 meet this talk i think your talk is at uh, 5 to 2 in room b7 yes exactly yes yes <laughs> so yeah uh, for this i have i i put on the on the on the end of this talk a like small live demo to show those of you that have never used the module how it works and like I, I, I will try to navigate uh, with a small uh, cute location application from here to, to my hotel. By the way, how many of you have used the uh, location before? Can you raise your hand? Okay, like half of you, awesome. So yeah, so maybe some of you want to, to wait for this demo and some of you want to go, so it's up to you. Anyway, I will start with uh, giving a small overview of the module, what it is and what is not, for, for those who do not know it already. And then, uh, since last year's talk was somehow not uh, recorded, I decided to spend uh, two slides to also present what uh, we introduced in 5.8, which is still relevant uh, for, for those of you who do not use the GL plugin. And then I will go into the, into the more interesting part with all the new things we've we done in 5.9. So let's not waste time. Uh, to introduce this module, maybe the first thing I, I should say is that uh, this was initially uh, created as a part of Qt Mobility. Qt Mobility was a suite of uh, mobile-oriented uh, Qt module that were not part of Qt but they were like in a separate uh, like uh, SDK in a sense, and it was created during Nokia time for like Nokia mobile platforms. Now with Qt5, uh, mobility has been dropped, but uh, the content has been uh, slowly been integrated into Qt5. And location is the last uh, of these modules that have been like uh, made uh, official in Qt5.6. So uh, location that is, uh, in fact, a repository in our, in our uh, server that contains two actual Qt modules, and that is positioning and location. These two are separate. They have to be imported separately in, in the profile and separately in, in the QML. And positioning is basically a, a uh, it provides the functionality to retrieve the current position from the underlying hardware. So for that, we have several backends, and uh, on mobile platforms, it uses like the GPS from, from, the, from the mobile. On desktops, uh, like for example, on Linux, there, is, uh, there are two backends, Gypsy and Geoclue, which pretty much are, again, some meta backend that uses whatever is available uh, below. 
And uh, we also have uh, support for uh, parsing uh, streams of uh, serial for uh, NMEA sentences. This, uh, these streams can come over serial or from whatever other form. And then there is a location that is, uh, it, it basically does four things. It does uh, geocoding, that basically means converting to and from a, an address and, and, a, and a geocoordinate. Routing, meaning getting the, the, the path and, and the maneuvers to, from, to go from A to B. And then uh, place of interest like search and manipulation, search by categories, free text search, and, and so on. And for this, we have both C++ and uh, QML API. For mapping, instead, uh, we only have uh, a QML API to display maps and to add content to the map. Content, uh, it, we call content map, map items. Basically, they are items that can be added. They are geometric items, like polyline, polygons. And then there is uh, a special item that is called QQuick item that allows you to uh, georeference a, a QML item. So whatever you, you can think in QML, you can georeference it on the map. Uh, you can add these items programmatically, uh, or you can source the, the data from a model and then have a, a view that instantiates uh, uh, the items for you. So what uh, location is not is a fully-fledged uh, GIS SDK, like, like the Esri SDK, for example. That, this is not. It's a much more limited in scope, and it's good for, you know, making even, like, mapping applications that do not need all the, all the GIS algorithms behind. Yes, so let's jump directly into, the, into what has been added in 5.8. So in 5.8, we added a new plugin that was contributed by S3. S3, for those of you who do not, do not know, is the major GIS provider in the world today. And this plugin is, uh, well, it's an acute location plugin, so it doesn't do what, what uh, their SDK does, but uh, it still is very useful because it has uh, a very nice ter terms of service for the mapping. So they, they, this plugin offers all the raster maps from Esri, and they do not even require a token to be used. Uh, routing and geocoding on the other side it, it are supported, but do require a token. And uh, the terms of service, I don't remember exactly. They are documented on our web, web on the documentation page for the plugin. And uh, I mean, if you are interested, you can also go to Esri. They have a booth upstairs and ask them. Uh, on the downside, this plugin does not offer high DPI tiles. And uh, well, it will not most likely offer in the future. Then we did add also <coughs> uh, routing support to the plugin, uh, to map, the Mapbox plugin. And why this is great is because Mapbox uh, uses the OSRM uh, server on the backend. Uh, this is a very fast server, so it's very, it's almost immediate to return you a, a route. And previously, we used to support this in the OpenStreetMap plugin, but uh, it was pointing to the OSRM demo server, which it still, it still does, and we also upgraded the, the version to v5 to, to make it work with the latest one. But uh, the problem with the OSRM demo server is that it's down more often than not, because it's, uh, it's, the, it's a test bed for the OSRM team. So, now, with the Mapbox uh, routing support, you basically have the same feature, so immediate routing and availability, like it's a production-ready uh, service that you can use. It uses the same token as for mapping, so if you, have, if you already have a mapping, you can, you can use it for also for routing. So in the OpenStreetMap plugin, instead, uh, we upgraded the support for OSRM. Now it supports both. So if you still have the, the old, uh, an old OSRM server running somewhere, it still works with that. But it also works with the newer one. We got support for offline tiles. Uh, I won't say much more uh, there. Um, you can check. There is a blog post on that that explains how to use it on our, on our blog. So check that. 
And then maybe what I want to say is instead that we change the mechanism uh, with, in, with which uh, this plugin fetches the endpoints to, to, to fetch the tiles. So previously these were hard coded in the plugin. And uh, the problem with this is that uh, since the OSM plugin um, tries to use like open access se uh, services uh, out there, so services that do not require a token, that are free to access, that just gives you map for free. Now, these services tend to shut down every now and then. And the problem is there then that uh, you can have a plugin like in 561 that suddenly stops working and you need to upgrade to fix it. This is not always possible. So what we did instead was um, add one layer of indirection so these endpoints are not anymore hard coded, or actually they are also hard coded, but uh, the precedence is given to endpoints hosted on acute.io uh, URL. So what the plugin does is fetch these files with description, unpack the files, and then use the endpoints written in there. And in this way, we can update the content of these files should some of these endpoints stop working. Now, you can also disable this behavior and uh, revert to what is hard coded there that has been updated in the meanwhile. Or what you can also do is uh, make it point to a different repository, not Qt.io anymore. You can host your own files with the endpoints inside. And this basically turns the OSM plugin into a sort of Swiss Army knife plugin for geoservices. You can customize it. You can make uh, the map points to what you want. You can make the routing point to your own server, and so on. Also for, the, for this indirection, uh, more details on, on our blog. There is a blog post on it. Uh, moving on, uh, we also added interesting features in the core. Uh, and now, finally, it supports high DPI tiles. This was uh, a feature request uh, asked many times, because on uh, high DPI displays, the problem with our maps were, were that uh, it was, they were either blurry or the text would be unreadable. So in this way, now we use uh, high DPI tiles and, uh, and uh, we got the best of, uh, we got both. And this is an example here. This is, uh, on the right you see uh, the map that has uh, low DPI tiles and uh, like close to the bottom, the text uh, is visibly blurred. But uh, if I switch to high DPI, it looks much sharper. So this is basically what high DPI tiles do. Together with this, we also added support for a new mode for the tile cache that works uh, quite well in combination, that is unitary. And why this is useful is because previously you could only set a limit, megabyte like limit for the tile cache. And uh, then it's a little bit difficult to predict how many tiles you're going to cache if you're using low DPI, high DPI, and so on. And in addition, some, some providers allow you to cache a specific numbers of tiles, not a specific numbers of megabytes, for the same reason. So in this way, you can actually change the way the cache for works, and uh, you can cache, uh, like, I don't know, 6,000 tiles that, for example, was the free limit for Mapbox some time ago. Cool. Now we jo uh, jump into the news in 5.9. This is where the most of the uh, changes landed. And uh, we did a lot of rework in the core. And finally, we managed to open a uh, cute location to, to support third-party mapping engines. This means that a plugin does not have to use anymore the like pretty limited uh, raster tile renderer that is shipped with Qt, but it can use anything. It can, it can render off screen and then, and then just bleed the texture or even render natively like using OpenGL into a QSG render node or something like that. And the only thing that location does now is, uh, in this case, is uh, passing camera parameters to the plugin and making sure that the projection, so the like coordinate items and so on, 
uh, actually match one-to-one -one what is shown in the map. So for this reason, uh, what we've done was also like encapsulating the projection support or code that was pre previously like spread all over the renderer into a class that is uh, reusable. So for example, now the Mapbox GL plugin uses projection from Qt, meaning that uh, to match a point on the map is uh, calculated in the same way, both in Qt and in Mapbox. And this is also extensible. So in the near future, we might in be interested in supporting other projections. And in this way, it will be just enough to subclass QGO projection and, and then it would be most likely working. Now, with the support for third-party engines, uh, one thing that might become challenging was or is drawing map items with these engines. So for this reason, what we also did was uh, allowing a plugin to say that uh, it, can, it can draw like map items. Actually, it's even more granular than that. It can say which map items it can draw. So if that's the case, say the Mapbox plugin actually can draw all the geometric items. Uh, these items are passed through, uh, passed to the plugin, and uh, the rendering, the render pa uh, code path is is uh, disabled. Interaction on the other side still uh, happens in, uh, in Qt because uh, these items are QQuick items. And uh, interaction is normally achieved using mouse areas in them. And so we still handle that. Yes. So the problem with this approach, so opening to third party engine, uh, is that uh, once we will have more than one diff uh, third party engine, there might be that some features of, of one engine are not present on the other one, and, and vice versa. And also, like some features that are present on both might actually work differently on the two engines. So this is a problem that we had to solve. And uh, there were different uh, like suggestions uh, for how to solve it. One suggestion was like to create uh, a special uh, QML plugin for each, plug for each geoservice plugin. In the end, we didn't like it, and uh, we went for a different solution. That was, and, and we created a type we called map parameter. So this type is a little bit special because it's uh, basically a duct typed uh, QML item. It only has one property by default, but uh, the user is in charge of defining the other uh, required properties. I will show you in a second an example. And in this way, um, the advantage is that uh, if you define a map parameter for one plugin and, uh, and suddenly you decide to switch plugin, then everything will still work, and the, the first parameter will be just ignored. This is an example. Oops, wrong button. Uh, what you see here is a map with uh, a polyline. And, uh, and in this uh, map here, I have uh, some map parameter defined. So for example, in this case, the first one is a map parameter of type layout. You see this property is already in there. Uh, but uh, below that, uh, the other properties, uh, these have been defined by the user using the property var, blah. I mean, you, can, you could even use the, the, the type there, you could do property string because they are all string and it would also work, but for simplicity, I just used var. So as you see, these properties are there, but what are they for? Well, at the moment they do not do, no, do nothing, but if I use the plugin they are su that supports them, what you get is a polyline that is uh, ca with a case in blue and uh, white dashes. So in this case, what they do is basically exposing like uh, the Mapbox GL uh, runtime style specification and allow me to, to interact with them. Also at runtime, I could change the color at runtime and it will also work. And uh, this is completely plugin specific and uh, yeah, it has, uh, uh, 
it, it has to be documented like per plugin. Uh, together with the external uh, renderers, what we also enabled that we was previously impossible was to rotate and tilt the maps and also change the field of view. Uh, this is uh, pretty much necessary for most of use cases that are not uh, showing a dot on a map, right? And uh, this also comes with uh, new gestures for the gesture area. So they have been created like uh, following what others do, like Google Maps or, or Maps.me or whatever other map apps you have on your phone. Like you have, it has two finger rotation and you can pivot it around any point on the map. And it has a two finger vertical slide for tilting. And uh, these, are, uh, these are only touch in 5.9. But uh, in 5.10, we also added uh, uh, scroll wheel plus modifier to control these properties also with the mouse on a desktop. There are also minimum and maximum properties, just like for zoom level and for each of these parameters. Well, OK, not for bearing, but for the others. Because, for example, if a plugin supports uh, tilt up to 90 degree, you might not want to allow the user to tilt up to 90 degree in your application. And the last thing is that uh, so it uh, without anisotropic filtering, when once uh, we initially implemented it, it looked like this. So as you see in the in the far back or also in not so far back, the the image gets very blurry and you cannot distinguish anymore. So what we decided was to actually enable anisotropic filtering by default wherever it's available and when the map is uh, is tilted because it just looks much better and uh, it doesn't cost that much. I mean, this is a feature that today most of the GPUs does do in a hardware and the performance impact is so small and uh, the, the result is so much better that we just uh, forced, it in, forced it on where it's available. Right, so with, uh, with maps, uh, of course, uh, we have to rotate also the map items that are added to a map. So when a map plugin does not support map items, the map items are drawn on top, meaning that if the map plugin does not support map items but does draw, for example, a terrain mesh, and then there is a street, or it does draw like 3D item, 3D buildings, and then there is a street on top, but, but it doesn't render it natively, this might, might look bad because it's stitched on top. Uh, but where it's uh, available, uh, then it's the map uh, plugin, the, the third, third party engine that is in charge of doing the proper compositing, and it, it will look okay. And I will sh show you an example at the end. So this is uh, how it looks now. Uh, oopsie. Uh, here I have uh, a, a video item from Qt Multimedia and I georeferenced it to, um, to the map and I can rotate it or tilt it and it will look like if it is on the map. Now, uh, to, do, to implement this, uh, we had to introduce a small uh, performance regression due to the way the items have to be calculated now. We think it's not noticeable in the average use case, and uh, there are actually ongoing efforts to, to fix it. It's not yet in, but uh, we hope it's, uh, it's gonna be fixed at some point. Um, one other feature request that, uh, or well, several other feature requests that uh, were asked at, uh, various stages was support for layers. And uh, this was something that the user actually um, faked in a way by uh, simply stacking multiple map elements on top of each other. And uh, so we, dis we were discussing whether it would make sense to, to have a, like a proper layer API or to just support this approach a little bit better. 
And in the end, we went for the second, for the second uh, strategy. So if you want multiple layers uh, today with uh, location, you can uh, stack multiple map items. And we made it a little bit easier now. So one thing we did uh, was transforming the zoom level property to be now normalized for a like, tile size of 256 square pixel. So that means that if you set a zoom level, whatever plugin you're using, it will still look at the same size. We then also added a new plugin, items overlay, that is uh, very simple in a sense, but also quite useful. So this plugin does, doesn't do, draw anything as map, but only draws, the, only draws the items that are added to it. So what's the use case? The use case is uh, adding a layer on top of everything where you can add your items. And then uh, below you are free to switch like uh, layers the way you want without actually losing the items you added. The alternative would be to add all your items with a map item view, but that is actually much more complex sometimes if you don't have many of them and, or you want to add them programmatically. One other problem with the stacking of, uh, of maps was that the map copyright notice that most of the times you are forced to show by to comply with the terms of services was always drawn on the same spot. Like on the bottom left, there was this line, copyright, blah. And if you have two of them or more of them, they stack on top of each other and they just look like they are unreadable. So what is possible to do now is to sh uh, uh, switch them off and uh, you can add a, a map copyright notice type that you can arrange the way you want uh, on the map so that you can comply with the terms of service and still have a decent looking map. Uh, the last thing I want to say here is that uh, we allow to programmatically set uh, uh, zoom level beyond the, the, the bounds uh, why? Uh, so the, the use case is the following. So when you have multiple layers, you will have maybe, or probably you will have maps that support different ranges of zoom level. For example, you might have a base layer that supports up to 20, and then you can have uh, like a, a, an overlay that is perhaps hill shades or something, and that will be up to 16. So what you would have to do without this is to check what's the zoom level, and then switch off the overlay when it goes beyond, because it otherwise would clamp to 16, and it wouldn't match the, the, the base layer anymore. So in this way, instead, when you don't set the zoom level via gesture, so via the gesture area, but you set it programmatically, or, or like through a property binding, if the underlying engine uh, supports over zoom, which is uh, what I'm going to say in a second, uh, then the zoom level, uh, uh, maximum zoom level is not honored and you can zoom beyond that. And uh, I can show you an example now. Um, so this map doesn't work, but uh, I hope uh, this one does. See? So I have a, a base layer now that is, uh, uh, yeah, some uh, open cycle map. And then I can add on top like a um, hill shade layer. And I can zoom in. And at some point, uh, I will go beyond the, the maximum zoom level for the hill shade layer. But it will still be there. And it will be just a little blurry. But it will not uh, mismatch the, the bottom layer. Yes, and this is achieved, oopsie, this is achieved by enable finally over zooming of tiles. Uh, you can see on the, on the right, top right, how it used to look until 5.8. So when uh, tiles were not uh, available uh, yet, like for example, when they were loading for the first time, there, there were these like empty squares on the map. What we now finally do, like most of the other engines, uh, is using previous uh, or, or lower zoom level tiles, if, they, if there are, and we just uh, magnify them to, to fit, uh, like for example, 
in this area or on the, on the left. We limit it to five zoom level back because uh, we noticed that uh, after that it would be just too blurry and it wouldn't be possible to, to distinguish anything. And it also works only in one direction. So for now it only works when you zoom in, but not the other way around. So this is an example. Uh, this is a map that uh, has uh, three zoom level of offline tiles. I, I rip or I get got the tiles from uh, uh, visible earth project so you can see that when I or maybe you can see that when I move between zoom level one point something and two the the map gets uh, sharper because the next uh, tile level is used but once I go past three that doesn't happen anymore and uh, everything that is uh, from the uh, like previous zoom level is used up to seven when well then it's stopped and it's not rendered anymore yes and uh, we have added also more features like uh, the map ready signal that uh, finally notifies when the map is uh, instantiated by the plugin and it's ready so that methods like to coordinate and from coordinate works Be previously it was not possible to to know when that happens fit viewport to map to, to visible map items if you have map items that are not visible and you still want to fit to the visible one, these are not considered anymore. It's finally possible to disable prefetching that I think helps a lot on mobile devices that otherwise keep downloading data while you are using the map and slows down everything. We added the map item group type uh, whose use case is to basically group together multiple map items inside a separate QML file. Uh, but this is tech preview and it might change because we noticed that this won't be supported if you want to instantiate a map item group with a map item view. So it might change. Yes, so uh, with the uh, features I'm done. If you want to attend the Mapbox talk that goes a bit more into the details on the Mapbox plugin, you can go. And otherwise, for those of you who have never used uh, Location, I have uh, a small live demo to show you how to use it and like some basic functionalities. And I will try to make a, a small app that uh, might uh, route me back uh, to my hotel from the BCC. So to do that, uh, the first thing you, you want to do is to add, uh, to, to do import cute location here. And then uh, we can start by adding a map element on, on this uh, rectangle container. So something like map. And uh, when you create a map, what you need to do is uh, setting a plugin because uh, that's what actually uh, backs this QML type. So I can add a plugin, say, uh, OSM now I noticed that the default map is uh, that we provide with OSM is for a day and a half currently offline it's provided by by open map surfer that is uh, actually a, a university project And uh, I think that if I now set the anchors to fill the parent, we will see the copyright notice only. And yeah, it doesn't load any tile. So what we can do uh, instead uh, is to specify a plugin parameter to use the IDPI tiles, because the IDPI tiles for the OSM street style are actually provided by Wikimedia and those are more likely not to go offline. So what I would use is a plugin parameter. Let's see if I remember it. Um, oopsie. I think it was OSM mapping uh, high DPI. 
tiles. Um, and then value would be true. Oh yeah, so this works. Uh, now we have uh, Wikimedia tiles. Well, and uh, and uh, somehow the map, if you if you don't do anything, is centered in London. So what we could do now is to use position source to find where is our position. But uh, what I will instead do is just since I know where is my position is the BCC, I can just look it up using a a geocode model. So what I could start doing is um, create a geocode model. Well, first I create two variables. A waypoint start, same. And then, uh, well, just one for now. So then I create a geocode model. And uh, I will use the same. Uh, also, the geocode model needs a plugin to have uh, basically a backend for it. And I will use the same plugin I use, I use for the map. So say ID. Uh, um, That does not exist, so I give the name to map2. Okay, so this is the model, uh, but we need to set a query to it. Uh, so what we do is, uh, well, we set out update to true so that we don't have to update every time we change a query. And then we can do like, on location changed. This, by the way, is all documented on our documentation page. So on location changed, what I could, I could do is to take the the result of the of the query. Well, in this case, we can. I I, I will keep it simple. I assume that the query is correct, and it will return me at least one value. So I could do like root dot waypoint start. Equals to get zero dot coordinate. All right, so. Oh yeah, thank you, thank you, that's right. So this doesn't do anything yet because I'm not firing the query. To do that, I could do something like on completed of the of the main main the root element. And then I could uh, set the query like geocode start. Uh, something like it's a string it's just a string so it could be like bcc berlin done this in theory already works so but i'm not using the the value for nothing so i can uh, set the center geocode root geocode oh, waypoint start Okay, geocode start, waypoint start. Oh, that's right. I've, uh, I, I always get this wrong. Thank you. Uh, this is also wrong. It's dot query. Is it query? Um, yeah, I think so. So this is auto updated on location changed. 
looks all right. Yes, yes, but at the moment I'm not using anything from Qt positioning. I'm not using a position source, and uh, it, the, all, all you see, I, I'm, for example, if you want to use a manually specified uh, uh, geo coordinate, you might do something like, uh, I don't know, something like Qt uh, positioning dot coordinate and then something inside. But to do that, you need to import Qt positioning because it comes from it. So why doesn't this work? Um, okay, I have a safety net. I wrote this before, so and I can just uh, pull it in. Okay, so... This also doesn't work, so it might be actually a network problem. I might want to use a separate plugin, but then I need to a, set an API key because the only other plugin that we have that currently provides geocoding, okay, two, two plugins is S3 and here, but both require an API key to, to, to f fire the geocode. And at the moment, the OSM, so I can check if Nominatim actually works online uh, like this all right so something like let's see ah the mouse You can search. No, I mean. no, it doesn't work with my keyboard, so I bring it back. Ah, okay, okay. This is what we use in the OSM plugin. Um, So we go here and check if it works here. This is the actual problem uh, with using OSM plugin in production. That's why it's actually discouraged and it's, we have brought this also on the documentation page. The others are paid, but they usually have a free tire. Okay, maybe not, uh, not uh, the, uh, the here, but... Uh, so like I think I think Esri has a free tire, and uh, yeah, I mean in theory, Mapbox is going to add support for for geocoding like in 5.11, and then you can also the, use the free tire there. So okay, it works here apparently. Or oh, does it? Yes. Okay, so let's see why this doesn't. Let me. Do something. Okay, let's see if it, there is a, a route in Berlin. Otherwise, there must be some problem which I cannot say in the backend. No, actually, no route. So, yeah. But yeah, I mean, the point is uh, you can have your geocode model, uh, fire your queries, and then uh, what I was going to do was uh, like uh, use a root model, use the two endpoints, and, uh, and then uh, like use this method, like if both waypoints would be defined, I would just add the two waypoints to the root query, and like in this case, also set the travel mode to be pedestrian because I don't have a car here and, and then update. And then to finish, uh, to show the route, what I would do is have uh, a map item view uh, that source the data from the root model and uses a map route 
as a, a map item to show the line. And then uh, uh, in this case, if you have more than one root, everything would be shown. But what you could do, for example, is uh, like add here a uh, index equals equals zero. Then uh, we use uh, like blue color. Otherwise, if we have more than one root, we can go transparent. And yeah, still no result, but uh, in this way, you just draw the first root. And then you can, of course, uh, extend this, select the root. Uh, there are plenty of apps I can show you, maybe one I made, if I can find it. Since we have maybe some more time, um, give me a second. So this is a simple uh, application I, I just wrote for testing. Um, and uh, it uh, I think by the by default uses OSM but or or maybe Mapbox. So you can you can select your your Map provider, in this case is what, something. Uh, and then you can select your root provider and then, uh, yeah, you can just uh, uh, change. Okay, maybe this is not the best map. Um, oops. Yeah, I don't know. Somehow I selected Oslo to Berlin. And then uh, this calculates the route, and then it's a little bit unfinished, but it would give you all the all the maneuvers on on this panel, and you could extend that, make them also add an icon for each of them, and and and, and so on. Yes. So. <coughs> yes. It is. You get uh, you get a different class as a, res a return type. It's a QGO root or QGO root as opposed to Q declarative geo root. So the one the second wraps the first, uh, but you can do routing on on the on the C plus plus side without the need for QML. Q quick widget, yes. If you need the map in widget, yes. And uh, I mean, someone tried to do it without, but they he was he was having some weird crashes. I don't know, maybe it was you. <laughs> but uh, I I cannot recommend this because it's not tested. I mean, we only know that Q quick widget will work, but if you do something like using the engine directly, it might not. Okay, so to conclude, uh, lots of new features, uh, and uh, I mean, this hopefully opens new application scenarios. I mean, before with the maps we had, uh, one couldn't do much, but uh, now at least one can start uh, considering using this, like for example, for navigation purposes, and so on. So, but this is just the beginning. Um, we are already trying to improve on this, like for 5.11, uh, but it's uh, it's a lot of work, uh, so I mean, we also would like if the community can help us can help us like with uh, not only code contribution but even just testing, reporting bugs, uh, feeding us with uh, feature requests, use cases, everything that helps to improve this module is highly appreciated. Yes, uh, five ten got uh, some minor fixes and a Mapbox GL update, which. Uh, actually ended up also in 5.9.2. So yes, you are going to get uh, the 3D extrusions also on 5.9.
Thanks for your attention. Uh, for bug reports and feature requests, we have our usual bug tracker. But if you want, uh, we are also usually available also on IRC. So cute mobility on free node. Thanks. <laughs> Questions? Comments? Uh, not supported at the moment. Sorry? Oh, yeah. So the question was whether, whether we support other reference systems or projections. Uh, at the moment, we only support Web Mercator, uh, but uh, we are planning, I mean, the idea is that uh, the location renderer won't support anything, anything else, but we want to make it possible to to uh, bind external uh, third-party engines that I have this feature to support other uh, reference systems and projections. So in the future, it might be possible that this happens, but not with, uh, not with uh, what Qt currently offers, like with the plugins that are currently in Qt. But it might be like that you get like, I don't know, say Google decides to make a a Qt location plugin, and they also want to support with WGS84 uh, and then and gen, gen, general perspective projection, and then you, you get that too. Was it, was it possible to write an own plugin for, uh, for the, the official German reference system like KM32 or 33 for the Klaus Krieger? So uh, the question is if it's possible to write now a plugin that supports a different uh, special reference system. Uh, so at the moment, it's not yet possible because uh, we actually noticed that in the private API that we have, uh, some things are just uh, like hard-coded to Web Mercator. But we are trying to change it. Uh, we have a... Um, a, 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 an experimental branch, it's called WIP slash navigation, and uh, there we are trying to extend this. Uh, patches are already in there to fix this, but they are not approved. So, I mean, I don't know, if you want to have a look and maybe contribute, uh, that's, where, that's where to look. Any other question? If not, thanks again. And uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of the day. <laughs>